This is Twit. Doug M. in our uh, Discord uh, asks, and I hope this is not a painful question. All of your novels are so visual. I was sure by now there'd be a, a movie of Demon. Uh, what's the story, Morning Glory? Uh, Why of, aren't we, uh, have you, I know they've optioned these. Yes, uh, almost every book I've done, except for Kill Decision, it was interesting. Every every book just about I've done has been optioned, or at least I've been offered things. I haven't always said yes. Uh, to me, it is important that, again, I understand things can, wow, we're, we're keeping the Roalt cover up there. <laughs> That's, Don't that's can you scroll past me. that, Ant? Because <laughs> no, we, no, it's just making just it's making Daniel crazy. Like, why is it next to Earth? Anyway, <laughs> uh, sorry, I, I'm okay. <laughs> why is there a hunk of granite with uh, a guy on it? Right. And it's like an igneous rock. <laughs> and why is he standing on it? Uh, anyway, uh, sorry. What was the question? Uh, <laughs> uh, Netflix. Uh, oh yes, film production or yeah. TV production. I have uh, conversations. I'm approached fairly often about Damon as well. Uh, a number of scripts have been developed, probably five or six or seven at this point for various properties. Uh, but my books, I think, are somewhat of a challenge because they are science-based. Yeah. And when I say challenge, it doesn't they mean- they, The Martian. The Martian yeah, was science-based. That, to me, seems like it's a proof that people can, do people want realistic sci-fi, yeah. grounded sci-fi, as we yeah. call it. Yeah. And so, for whatever reason, uh, it, it just hasn't worked out. I, I would only say that- Hollywood tends to develop about 20 times the material. Oh, it's so hard to get a movie made. Versus what they produce. Yeah. And especially, we've just had a profusion of television uh, recently. Uh, so, for example, Delta V, you know, we talked to various parties, and you would get a response like, well, well, we already have a space show. And it's like, you, oh, well, hold Lord. it. It's space. <laughs> it's like, you don't need just one show. You know, you can have, but that's, that goes into this idea of what is science fiction and what is just fiction at this point. Right. There has to be a point at which a, because this is very realistic, where a space story is not, let's say, science fiction. It's just fiction because we're doing it. Yeah. So it's the same thing with cell phones. Like cell phones are in every single show, comedy, drama, whatever it is. It's just the background element, whereas they used to be some sort of unusual right. thing. I'm hoping at some point that just because something is in space doesn't mean it's primarily, oh, it's sci-fi space show. It's just how we live. That's where we need to get to. So my answer would be that I, I often speak with uh, Hollywood production uh, companies and studios about adapting my work. Uh, I'm still hopeful that that can be done. And I, I have a number of things in play now. We'll see what happens. I could just see a Hollywood executive saying... What the hell is a Lisa Juice circle? I don't understand. <laughs> That's an excellent imitation. <laughs> what are you? Lagrange, Lagrange. I don't, I don't get it. That's right. Just reverse the polarity. It'll be fine. <laughs> but do you have anti gravity? Because we yeah. really need that. Oh yeah, different book. We right. figured out a way to make hair stick up, and it's really. Uh... Anyway, um, I'm sorry. I shouldn't. I don't want, honestly, I don't want it to be made into a movie or a TV show because I'm always disappointed by sci-fi once it's made into something because my mind and your, your incredible writing, my mind is building something so much better than any movie set could ever be. Well, that is the wonderful thing about the written word. It is. It's alive. James yeah. Ty is in my head. Yeah. And if you get Ryan Gosling to play him, it's going to destroy it for me. <laughs> it would be different. Uh, <laughs> but again, the, the appeal there is that if you can reach a broader audience mess. with this, yeah. and I yeah. don't want to say message, let's say this this narrative, because it it moves the Overton window. It moves the, right. if the frame of acceptable conversation of what we assume. Like if people start assuming we can, of course, make an amazing future, and this would be one way how, that completely changes how we engage. You've got to get it in future. people's minds that yeah. it's possible. Yeah. You've got to give them some urgency because we are at the you, crossroads. You're exactly, you're exactly correct. Uh, and that there isn't a lot more time to prepare for yeah. this. And there's also a tremendous opportunity. So yeah. even if you are a selfish bastard, you can jump in and get busy on this and you can make a huge amount of money and sort of as a side effect, help right. the world. I have to say, though, the one thing, people die in this. <laughs> people have misadventures, yes. Misadventures. And, you know, personally, I think there's no lack of people who would say, yeah, sure, fine, I'll well, do look it. Look at Mount Everest. People die yeah, on I'll Mount do, Everest yeah, almost every year. As a matter of fact, in one episode, I think seven people died yeah, that's a good going point. to Mount Everest. And so they're... I like to say that there 
are among us explorers and adventurers, and Absolutely. they have an evolutionary purpose. And they have always been the, the uh, pathfinders, the trailblazers, the people who chart the oceans. And we see them now jumping off of buildings and skydiving and racing cars. Want, they adventure. need a frontier. Yeah. And so that's what Nathan Joyce wanted to do. He wanted to give them a frontier. Yeah. And they will go out and do sort of what they are born to do anyway. Yeah. Hey, I'm Rod Pyle, Editor-in-Chief of Ad Astra Magazine, and each week I join with my co-host to bring you This Week in Space, the latest and greatest news from the final frontier. We talk to NASA chiefs, space scientists, engineers, educators, and artists, and sometimes we just shoot the breeze over what's hot and what's not in space, books, and TV. And we do it all for you, our fellow true believers. So whether you're an armchair adventurer or waiting for your turn to grab a slot in Elon's Mars rocket, join us on This Week in Space and be part of the greatest adventure of all time.